Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off talking about multi-system emulator Ares, and Ares just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, Ares version 138 is the latest release. We've got a whole bunch of bug fixes, performance improvements, and optimizations. And they say here a total of 10 contributors have created 58 commits. The impacted or improved systems here are the Atari 2600, Wonderswan, NES, N64, Game Boy Advance, and PlayStation. And it's worth pointing out that with the Sega Mega Driver, Genesis, and the 32X, there is a bit of reduced performance. There's an accuracy improvement, and generally when there's an accuracy improvement, it requires greater processing power. And for those who may be unaware, accuracy improvement in emulation means that an emulator is behaving closer to the actual system. Ares is 100% free, it's open source, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Moving on, and we're quickly talking about N64 emulation on PC with Rosalie's Mupin GUI, and RMG just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, version 0.5.9 is the latest update, and we've got some fixes and brand new features. For example, they added color settings for the on-screen display in the settings dialog. They added a test rumble button to the options dialog and RMG input, and they updated cheats in Glide N64. Next up, we're talking about PlayStation 3 emulation with RPCS3, and RPCS3 also got a brand new update. So the latest release here is version 0.0.32 alpha, and it contains a whole bunch of changes. We've talked about some of these in previous videos, but now they've been bundled together and, well, released together. And as for what's changed, well, there's quite a bit in here. There is a whole lot. This is, I would argue, a pretty big release. We've got a bunch of bug fixes, improvements, and yes, brand new features. For example here, for save states, there's some user experience fixes. They fix save state reload functionality from the home menu. They've added a new search bar to the save manager. And there's now GunCon 3 device emulation. If you wanted to see the full change log, I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Next up, we're quickly talking about multi-system emulator Emulicious. Now, Emulicious is written in Java, so it's pretty much compatible with any Thing that supports Java, and Emulicious just got a brand new update. Now this is just a minor update with some fixes, but they did fix the flickering screen in A Bug's Life and Men in Black for the Game Boy Color. And speaking about fixes, next up we're talking about a system that's probably going to require a pretty big fix. Apparently Limited Run Games is shipping out 3DO games on CDR rather than press discs. Not every 3DO can run CDR games. In fact, most of them can't unless you've modded them. If you are curious about this one, I'll drop a link to a very informative video in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out. It's by Video Game Esoterica. And they got their hands on the actual CDRs that Limited Run is shipping out, and things are not pretty. There are a lot of people complaining about this one. The game is called D's Diner, and I think it set people back around $70. Fortunately, Limited Run has noticed, and here is their official response. We are actively working with our disc replication partners to provide replacement pressed discs to our customers, and hope to find a solution shortly. We will keep customers fully updated, and in the meantime, invite any customer experiencing an issue to request a full refund. Moving on, and we're talking about 7-Eleven, and 7-Eleven is partnering with Tetris to release a brand new handheld. This is the Slurpee Plus Tetris handheld gaming device. So as far as I know, this thing is real. It will cost a whopping $30. It's powered by three AAA batteries or a USB-C cable. It's got a 1.8 inch screen on it, and in my opinion, it's way too expensive for what you're getting in return. It only plays Tetris. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Next up, this is a quick one and just an FYI. It was making the internet rounds today. The tweet is as follows. Surely this isn't legal. Valorant now takes screenshots of your PC. 
they are actually able to screenshot Discord chats and full screen any window without you knowing and uploading it to their servers. I mean, I would argue this is a huge concern. There are some other anti-cheats out there that take screenshots, but they're normally limited to just the game window, not your entire screen, including possible sensitive data. Now, to make matters even worse, this anti-cheat known as Vanguard has also been added to League of Legends and has been accused of bricking PCs. Next up, another quick one, and we're talking about Star Ocean, the second story R and Square Enix has just removed Denuvo from this game on Steam. Star Ocean, the second story R, was just released a handful of months ago. It's got an overwhelmingly positive review score, and there is a demo available. Next up, we're talking about some Linux stuff, and Valve has just released Proton 9.0-1. We have talked about this one in previous videos, but now it's official. There's a whole bunch of games now marked as playable. If you are curious about this one and wanted to read the full changelog, I'll drop a link to it in the description below. The infamous Lord of the Rings Gollum is now playable, as well as Sonic Colors Ultimate. And speaking about games on Linux, next up we're talking about NVIDIA, and NVIDIA has just released an update to GeForce Now to make it more compatible with the Steam Deck. They say that their new installation method automatically configures GeForce Now's browser for the Steam Deck and makes streaming games a lot easier. Next up we're shifting from Linux to Windows, and this is another quick heads up. Apparently here, the April 2024 security update might break your VPN, and this is right from Microsoft. I mean, they say right here, Windows devices might face VPN connection failures after installing the April 2024 security update or the April 2024 non-security preview update. They are working on a resolution and will provide an update in an upcoming release. Moving on, and we're talking about Game Boy Advance emulation on Android with Pizza Boy A Basic. And Pizza Boy A Basic just got a brand new update and introduced a brand new feature. So in addition to gyro support and light sensor support, they've introduced local multiplayer. Additionally, Pizza Boy GBA Pro is also back, which is the paid version of Pizza Boy GBA, or now Pizza Boy A. And it's called Pizza Boy A Pro. If you bought it before, you should still have it. And last up here, this is just a fun one, and I don't know if it's going to apply to a lot of people. But if you've got an older device, you may now be able to run Discord on it. So at the time of filming, version 1.1.0 is the latest release of Discord J2ME. They say this update adds basic direct message support, a refresh button to the message list, and minor UI improvements. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff, or maybe one or two or a thousand fluffs on my shirt. Let me know your thoughts about anything we talked about today in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.